This is Mystical Block, a fairly new questing skyblock mod pack that starts us off on a single grass block floating above the nothingness of the void with a couple of items to start with. Most notably, we get the Inferium C tier and a wooden hoe because this is initially at least a mystical agriculture based mod pack. We do of course have quests. You can get to the quests by opening your inventory and clicking the quest book, or you can open the quest book given to you at the start of the pack. It says, welcome to mystical block. Mystical block, as you can see, is a skyblock type mod pack where the focus is on mystical agriculture. You start with an Inferium Seed and progress your way through the game with it. Mods like Draconic Evolution, Batania, and Waymore are added to make the experience more fun. And there's also a Discord link if you want to join the Mystical Block Discord. And our quest begins here with the Overworld questline, which is a little sprawling and a little intimidating when you first look at it. But I am fairly certain that right here is where we want to start. This mod pack is based off mystical agriculture, and to start off slash begin the mod pack, you have to gather Inferium Essence to make wood. With your wood, you can make wood seeds, then you can make dirt seeds, stone seeds, iron seeds, and way more. The seed reconstructor is the key to your next seed. Right-click the arrows to see which recipes are available in that seed reconstructor, and the seed deconstructor is your power source. So this is actually a pretty nifty start here. We start with quite a few things, but we still have basically no space to put them down. And so I think step one is to hoe this grass into farmland. Then we can go ahead and plant our Inferium seed. And then we do have the mod installed that lets us shift to accelerate the growth of this seed. And of course, once it is fully grown, we should be able to then right click to harvest it. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, we do get quite a bit of bread as other rewards here. And I believe that all of these cog shaped quests are all information quests. So you click on these and they usually tell you things that you need to know about moving forward. For example, this quest right here says how to get secondary seed drops, which we're going to need if we don't want to spend hundreds of hours just shifting to get one piece of Inferium every 10 seconds. It says you can get seeds by making Inferium farmland. You can make this by crafting it or by right clicking the farmland with Inferium Essence. So if we go ahead and break this and don't lose the seed there, we can then just right click our farmland with the Inferium Essence and we now have Inferium farmland and you'll see in the top left hand corner that it now says secondary chance 20%, which means that for every five Inferium that we harvest, we should get approximately one extra seed. So unfortunately we have acquired five, but didn't get any seeds. I'm sure we will get some more as we go here, but the next quest wants us to make dirt. And thankfully we can make dirt by simply crafting four Inferium together. That's going to allow us to do something like I was going to say like this, but I kind of have to jump to place it down, which is a little awkward because the farmland there is lower than the regular dirt block. The idea being here, of course, as soon as we get a second seed, we can turn this into yet more Inferium farmland. And then instead of growing just one Inferium crop at a time, we can grow two and then three, four, five, you know, 10, 50, however many we want to grow until we're getting just a crazy amount of Inferium in a fairly small period of time. So there we go, we got our first Inferium seed. And so now if we do the same thing again, right click with the Inferium Essence, right click with the Inferium seed, now we can shift to grow both of these at the same time. And because we have FTB Ultimine installed, what we can do is we can hold down the FTB Ultimine key, which if we go to options, controls and type in Ultimine, I have mine set to a button on my mouse, but you can rebind this to whichever button you'd like. If you hold that down and right click, it's gonna harvest both of those simultaneously. And you can kind of see where this is going here. As we add even more farmland, we're gonna be able to shift, they're all gonna grow, and then we can simultaneously harvest all of them all at once with just a right click while we're holding the Ultimine button. We got two more Inferium seeds there, so we can make yet another piece of dirt, place that down right about here, hoe it, Inferium Essence it, and seed. And we can keep going until we have just a ton of Inferium Essence. One thing I am going to do here, in the top left, we do have this uh, this box. This is from the One Probe. If you uh, shift right click with this, you can configure it. You can place it in different places uh, just by clicking this little uh, interface here that will move it to different parts of the screen. Uh, also, I quite like this full transparent style. And given that we have EMC in the top left there, I might move this to the top center and then make it just that little bit smaller. That way we still get the information, but it's not being covered up and it's not too obtrusive. Also. For the time being, I don't think we need 
the minimap on either. I'm gonna go ahead and just untick enable minimap there. Uh, for those who are wondering, you press J and then go to options, minimap preset one, and then just untick this, and then you can close it down and that disappears. We can always bring that back in the future if we want, but for the time being, we have an extraordinarily small base and there is absolutely nothing but the emptiness of the void around us. And so I don't really think I'm gonna need a minimap to, uh, to find my way around this base. Once we made at least eight Inferium Seeds, we do get some more bread. We've also got at least 16 Inferium Essence. We get even more bread and we have at least four dirt. So you guessed it, we get even more bread. So now we've got a bunch of Inferium Seeds here. We've got uh, 16 down in total. The optimal number here, I think, is going to be 64 because the FTB Ultimine can only harvest 64 at a time. So an ideal size for a farm would be eight by eight. That way you can harvest every single one of the Inferium crops all at the same time. I'm also fairly certain that running is faster. Like if I shift here, you'll see it takes a little while for these to grow fully all the way up to harvestable. There they are. Whereas if we kind of step back and it's a bit dangerous on such a small platform, but if we sprint, these do grow a lot faster, like they're already ready to go. And so if we can just do this without <laughs> falling off the edge, we can harvest all of this Inferium substantially faster. Also, the pet creator was very kind in giving us a bed right at the start here. Now, I'm a little worried about falling off, even though I'm fairly certain that we won't. But just to play it safe, I'm going to go ahead and put a bit of a gap between the bed and the void. Fantastic. And now, the thing that we're kind of working towards is this dirt seed here. And as the quest book alluded to earlier, dirt seeds can be made in the seed reconstructor. So the way this works is we place down our seed destructor and our seed reconstructor. And basically the seed destructor is our power source. Real quick, I'm gonna turn auto jump off because I do not want to accidentally fall over the edge of the platform. And so if we go with seed destructor and then seed reconstructor, we can place the energy pipe here in the middle using the pipe wrench, which is given to us at the start. We can then shift right click this side. That's going to extract energy from the seed deconstructor and send it over to the seed reconstructor. And now in here, you guessed it, we can place seeds. Those are gonna get broken down into energy, which is gonna be sent over to the reconstructor. And if we want to make dirt seeds, it's four Inferium Essence, four dirt, and one Inferium seed. So one, two, three, four, put you in there. One, two, three, four, put you in there. And one seed goes in at the bottom. And boom, we get a dirt seed. Nice. And we can do the exact same thing here, of course, with the dirt seed that we've been doing with the Inferium Seed in that we can make it grow faster by running and we can harvest it to get Dirt Essence. This Dirt Essence can then be crafted into things like sand once we get Fire Essence. For now, I'm pretty sure that yes, the only thing that we can craft it into is dirt, but I think it's probably faster getting dirt using Dirt Essence, especially if we can get a large amount of Dirt Seeds here than it is doing it with the Inferium Essence. The only trouble there is that we don't have a crafting table, and so we don't have the ability to make that just yet. However, if we go up this way, there's also wood here, wood we can make with one Inferium Essence and three dirt. That seems incredibly doable. If we craft something like this, we get a log. We can then, of course, craft that into a standard crafting table. I'll place that right here for now, and then we'll put down some more dirt underneath like that to allow us to walk over to it, at which point we can do something like this and this is going to allow us to expand out our farms and our usable space much, much faster. So I think what I'm gonna try and do here is basically get a bunch more of these dirt seeds to allow us to make this platform much larger, much faster. And then we can look at setting up a ton of space for all the different farms, because one of the next things we're going to get is a wood seed, the wood seed again made in the reconstructor, this time with oak logs, inferior essence, and an inferior seed. In fact, we can probably make that happen. If we make a bunch of dirt, and then if we grab some more inferior essence, we can do this and this, and we can get four logs. We can then take that along with four inferior essence and one seed. And again, if we go boom, boom, and boom, and if we put some more seeds in here as fuel, that should get us our wood seed, which again, you guessed it, is going to get us wood essence, which we can then craft into wood, which again is going to allow us to expand out our platform just that little bit faster because it's going to allow us to, uh, to build things that are not just dirt. Now that we've got the extra space here and we can run basically non-stop, the seeds are coming in and the essence is coming in incredibly quickly. Again, we can now craft up a ton of dirt 
And of course, with the wood essence here, we can actually craft up a few things. Uh, you can, I believe, craft basically any type of wood, depending on how you craft the essence. So you can make regular oak logs, you can make oak saplings, you can make birch logs, jungle logs, you get the idea. Everything is craftable here. There are other things you can craft. It looks like jungle and acacia are locked behind nature essence, and we don't have nature seeds just yet. But I think I'm going to go for dark oak, which is just on this side. And we can get a lot of it very quickly here. And so I'll probably start kind of uh, outlining the edge of these farms with dark oak logs and potentially building individual farms for each crop. Because right now we're just using this one farm for everything. But I think we probably want to have an 8x8 area for inferium seeds and then a separate 8x8 area for dirt seeds and then wood seeds and, you know, all of the different seeds that we're going to get going forward. So, yeah, let's get out dirt. Let's uh, build an edge around this and let's build some more farms, shall we? Now, thankfully, we do have a mod called Quark installed because what I'm thinking here is I kind of want to have my wood around the edges look like this, but then at the corners, I want them to point upwards, the logs, that is. And so if we were to put our crosshair just underneath the block here until you get those little square brackets, you can then place a block directly underneath this block, which makes it much easier to do something like this. And that way, in the future, we could always do, you know, something like this and build kind of little uh, farming houses for all of our different crops. Okay, so I've just learned something new from the Twitch chat, which is actually very helpful. Let me quickly make an X here just so I can show this off because I have before now accidentally pressed K whilst holding a block. And if you do that, you get this little box next to your crosshair and I never knew what this was, but if it appears and you want to get rid of it, you just press K. But what it does is it locks your block placement to the block placement that it's currently going to do, if that makes sense. So I've been doing this little trick where we put the block underneath the wood here, but what you can do instead is you can take your oak lock, you can look at the floor, and if I were to place this right now, it would go up. And that's how I want it to go here. But of course, if I was to place it here, it would go down sideways. So instead, what we can do is hold the wood, look at the floor, press K, that's going to lock this. And then now if I put it down here, it places it the way that it would have gone down if we were to place it when we locked it, if that makes sense. So now if I unlock it and I were to lock it facing this way, even if I place it on the ground, it's going to place down sideways, which is super nifty and uh, actually makes building a whole heck of a lot easier. And then you can just press K a few more times until the overlay disappears and the lock is gone. So we've got an eight by eight here. And so now if I were to fill this with Inferium seeds, which I think is what we're going to do for this farm, this will be our Inferium farm. We should, in theory, be able to harvest all 64 inferior and let me quickly pick up the dirt and wood seeds that we have here we'll place those back down now we can just run in circles holding down ultimine and right click and we're just going to collect a ton of inferior incredibly quickly and of course we're going to collect so much inferior in fact that it fills up our inventory and so one thing we should probably do right away here is invest in some storage drawers so if we get a regular chest and then if we craft that chest with six planks, three at the top, three at the bottom, chest in the middle, that's going to get us a dark oak storage drawer. And we can place that down for now, right about here. We'll probably end up moving that in the future. But now we can put all of our inferior essence into there. And that is going to store up to 2048 inferior essence for us to extract at a later date. And of course, we can do the exact same thing with inferior seeds as well, because we're getting a ton of those. And we definitely want to store those as well because we can use them for power in our seed deconstructor so let's do this and this and now i think what i'm going to do is probably build a bit of a pathway between the farms we could build the next farm directly next to this farm but i think a little pathway is going to look a little bit nicer and so what i might do here is i might get some regular oak wood craft that into oak planks and then I might even go one step further and craft that into oak slabs just because I think it might look a little nicer if we have potentially a three or five wide gap like this. Also, I assume we do have building ones, but I assume that we also don't have access to craft one just yet because we need a stone seed. However, the pack did say that stone seeds are our next stop after the wood seeds. For those, we do need four stone. I think, though, unfortunately... We're going to have to go through into the mining dimension first. The next quest after wood here is to make the mining dimension teleporter, which is not too difficult. We do first 
have to get into a little bit of Tinker's construct by the looks of it. That is completely fine. The quest book seems to not know that I have made a crafting table. That is fine. Let me quickly pick up this crafting table right here to complete that quest. And then that's going to unlock a little bit of Tinker's construct for us. But yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll build potentially a five wide gap. This one's three. We'll maybe go four, five like that. And then from there, what we can do is we can uh, look at this, give it a quick rotation lock. And then if I place this down here, it's going to place it the correct way, which is fantastic. And we can build our next farm here. And we can do the same thing all the way around and build multiple more farms sprawling out into the distance. So I did just fall. This is a good time to mention that flying is not allowed on the server. Also, I need to change that, but we do have the forgiving void mod installed. And so when we hit the void, we should be teleported back to the sky. We are, and then we're going to slowly fall down to the surface. Of course, if you're playing on a server where flying is not enabled, that's going to be a slight problem. Uh, hopefully I can fix that for the next episode, but I'm hopeful that yes, we do get spared a death and we do land with half a heart. So let's quickly eat back up and uh, let's try not doing that again. Instead, let's just finish off this second little farm. And then I think once I've built this one, I'll also build a third farm over on the other side of the Inferium farm. In fact, using the same mod here, you can build these uh, cubes faster as well. Previously, I was doing this, which is not only slow, it's also a little dangerous. If I let go of shift, I will fall. Instead, if you uh, do the same thing, but look over this edge, you'll see a different kind of bracket appear. And then you can just place these down like this. And you can go just that little bit faster towards the edge. And it makes building ships like this just that little bit quicker. I am going to hold off on building the rest of the path just until we get through to the mining dimension, because once we get there, we should be able to make a building wand, and that's going to make putting all of the slabs down around all of these platforms that much easier. Chat is also right in that you can uh, also alter mine to her a giant area of farmland all at once. The, the trick then is just getting all of the inferior essence down before the farmland turns back into dirt, which does happen pretty quickly. Thankfully, once you've turned it into Inferium farmland, it then stays as farmland going forward and doesn't ever transfer back to, you know, Inferium dirt or anything like that. All right, so we've now got two new little farm areas, and so we're just going to do the same thing here. It shouldn't take too long at all for us to uh, get both of these filled up with dirt and wood seeds because of the fact that we can just sprint while holding right click, and that's going to give us a ton of seeds that we can just replant, and it should really take us less than a minute or two to, uh, to fill this up. All right, so now we have a full 64 block wood farm. We've got a full 64 block inferior farm, and we've also got a full 64 block dirt farm. Nice. So as per usual, we are going to need yet more storage drawers here because we have a ton of dirt essence and a ton of wood essence along with, of course, the associated seeds. So let's get one, two, three, four more chests as well as a bunch more planks here. And let's make a couple more drawers just so that we can get all of these stored away nice and tidily. I think I will put these over by their associated. You know what? Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll maybe do like this and this. At some point in the future, I assume we might end up automating the production of a lot of these. And so we'll have all of the drawers on the corner, I think. So I'll put the wood essence at the top like that. And we'll put the wood seeds. We don't actually have that many because I made just enough to do this area. We'll put those there. I'll move these to this corner as well. And then, ooh, what I'll do is I'll put these ones here like this. So it depends on how we want to build our farms going forward because we are going to build more farms. So we could either build them, you know, continuing in a straight line or we could build them to the left and right, which I think is probably what we'll do. So we'll build more going this way and this way. And all of the ones on this side, we'll put them on the left corner. And then over here, we'll do the same on the front left corner. And then for this farm, we'll probably just have them either on the front, maybe here potentially. Uh, yeah, I think that probably makes a lot of sense. Let's do this and then let's try and harvest this thankfully these don't lose like they don't spew everywhere when you break them like a regular chest does they should contain their inventory they do indeed fantastic we'll then do the same thing right about there just to be safe and to pick this up as well and then over here if we get down a few slabs like this we should be able to do 
the essence on the top, which I think is this one, and the seed at the bottom. Nice, okay, cool. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fine, and it's gonna allow us to easily see how much of each essence we've got and just harvest that essence going forward. So now that we've done that, if we want to get that building wand to allow us to build our slabs, we're going to need to go through to the mining dimension. To do that, we have to first go through a little bit of Tinker's construct. So over here, the quest wants us to make a pattern. The pattern is a super easy recipe. It is just some planks and some sticks. And so if we do two planks and two sticks, we get three patterns. We can then make a part builder. This is two patterns and two oak planks. Again, let me craft up more planks here. Any plank will do, by the way. It doesn't have to be oak. Something like this will do the trick. It will just make the part builder look like the wood that you chose. Let's quickly sleep. Now that we have the part builder, we might be able to make the wooden pickaxe heads required to make the mining dimension teleporter. So if I put this down and we open this up, we can place a pattern on the left, we can place the material that we want to use to make the part in the next slot. And then if we click pickaxe head, it's gonna go ahead and take, I think it was two oak there. Yeah, you'll see it says cost two here in JEI. So it takes two wood and the blank pattern and makes the pickaxe head. We can do the same thing again here. We can make yet another set of patterns, leave all of those in here, get another pickaxe head. And now we should have everything we need to make this portal. We just need a little bit more wood. In fact, if we just take three wood essence here, we can go ahead and craft yet more dark oak logs. And then if we craft some dark oak logs with dark oak planks and the pickaxe heads, we should be able to make the mining dimension teleporter. Nice. Let's put that down. I was going to say here, but I think we are going to make more Tinker's Construct benches. And so instead, let's get a little bit more dirt. Let's also eat a little bit of food because we have 33 bread and right now we are walking needlessly slowly given how much bread we have. Let's do this and this and we'll place the portal down right about here. And if I'm not mistaken, we just right click on this to teleport. Again, just to be safe on the off chance that we come back through the portal on a side that's not this side, I'm gonna put some dirt around so that we uh, don't instantly fall into the void. But now we are here in the mining dimension and there are a staggering number of ores in here. So we need a pickaxe, of course, that is gonna be able to mine for now just cobblestone because of course we're not gonna be able to get an iron pickaxe that can mine any of this uh, prosperity ore just yet. We do wanna keep an eye out for mobs, of course, but uh, if we head back, what we should be able to do is uh, utilize a pickaxe head along with, I believe, a tool binding and, if I'm not mistaken, a handle. Let me get yet more sticks and craft those into yet more patterns. We'll get a bunch of these and just load them up in here. Um, I think we also need a tool handle like this. And then from there, if we want to actually make a pickaxe, we just craft it together. And by the looks of it, we do need two pickaxe heads in this pack, which is interesting. And we also needed uh, two handles as well. That is completely fine. We have all of the wood to make that happen. And so if we craft two wooden tool handles with two wooden pickaxe heads and a one wooden tool binding, we get a standard wooden pickaxe, which over in here is going to allow us to begin to mine some of this stone. And now that we have access to cobblestone, that opens up a few things to us. First things first, it opens up the building wand. Uh, that is this guy right here. I'm going to bookmark that by hovering over it and pressing A. That's going to leave it over here so that in the future, I can just click here to see the recipe and uh, shift click it in for crafting. It's one cobblestone and two sticks. And that's going to allow us to place down, I think, up to five. Never mind, up to nine blocks at once, which is very nice indeed and is going to make building our oak slab pathways substantially easier. It also allows us to make a furnace. And once we have a furnace, we can actually make regular stone. And once we have regular stone, we can then look at making those stone seeds because just four stone, four inferium, and one inferium seed. And we get the ability to make stone essence. And that stone essence can then be used to make as much stone as we like. And it can also be used to make as much cobblestone as we like. Chat is right, we do have Ultimine. If we hold down the Ultimine key, we can mine all of this stone at once. That is gonna, of course, break our pickaxe, but it is substantially faster. And so now let's head on back through to here and let's see if we can't make a couple of these things happen. So first things first, let me get a stick or two 
And then let's do this and this to get the stone wand. Once we have the stone wand, now what we can do is we can just right click like this and it'll place down more of whatever block you're looking at. So here, it's just gonna place down five slabs at a time, which is gonna make building out this platform substantially faster, especially if we go and get a bunch of this wood essence that we can then craft into regular old oak, which is not made like that. Let me quickly check. It is made like this. Fantastic. We don't actually need that much of it. I think a stack is gonna be more than enough because we get so many slabs. That's probably more slabs than we're going to need. But now we can go around like this and just surround every one of our little farms here with a five wide oak path, just to make it a little easier to walk around and also to make it a little more likely that we don't fall off the edge of any farm while sprinting to grow things and die in the process. All right, so not too long later, we did have to make maybe five or six stone wands because although they are very helpful, they do break very quickly, unfortunately. You can make higher tier ones in the future. We can make iron ones, diamond ones, and creative ones, but those are a little bit outside of our price range for the time being. Let's go ahead and craft up a regular old Minecraft furnace, which apparently has had its recipe changed. Interesting. Is there a quest about that? There isn't interesting but let's have a look what is the recipe here it requires three smooth stone we can however by the looks of it use our campfire here so we can put the campfire down and that is lit already which is fantastic so i guess if we do one two three four that's going to get the stone for us very quickly and i guess in that sense we probably didn't even need to go to the mining dimension because that four right there if we combine that with four inferium one two three four and one seed is all that we need to make the stone seed right so we'll do this we'll do this and we'll do that i don't know if it matters which slot you put the inferium and the stone in but i'm just gonna do it the way it shows in jai there is our stone seed fantastic uh, let's do the same again though here because we need to get three smooth stone and we can do that by smelting three regular stone on the campfire and then now we should have what it takes to make a furnace. We do. Nice. Okay, cool. And so now we have this. We do have the ability to start making some charcoal, which is going to allow us to get a bunch of torches, which is going to allow us to light up this platform. Because although there is a quest down here for a mob farm, we don't want our mobs spawning in areas just randomly around the base. Not that they're likely to, mobs don't spawn on slabs, so there's no chance of them spawning on this uh, oak pathway, but they could spawn on the edges of these uh, dark oak logs if we go too far away and if we're not diligent about sleeping regularly, at least not until we get some torches. But once we have the charcoal, of course, we can then make some torches and we can begin to place those down around our platform. So if you press F7, any of these little yellow X's are where mobs can spawn. And so I think if we just do something like that all the way around, we should basically negate all of the areas that mobs can spawn. All right, nice. All the torches are down. And so now we should, I think, be mob free, even if we don't sleep. And the chat does make a good correction here, by the way. Mobs can spawn on slabs. They just can't spawn on slabs that are on the lower half of the block. So if I did this, mobs could spawn on that block, but they can't spawn on the bottom half slab block, that makes sense. Either way, let's go ahead and get rid of that extra slab. And let's take a look at where the quest book wants us to go next, just as soon as we craft some regular Minecraft chests, because right now our inventory is filling up with a lot of stuff that we probably don't need to make a storage door for, but that is gonna take up a lot of space in our inventory if we don't clear it out. We uh, don't really need the quest book. I've bound my quest book to a hotkey, so when I press it, it just opens. That's something you can do fairly easily in the controls. And for the time being, we don't need to carry two stone ones with us either. That is fine. Let's take a look, though, at where the quest book wants us to go next. I assume that we probably need to make an actual Tinker's Pickaxe, because the pickaxe we made earlier is a custom recipe for a regular Minecraft pickaxe. If we want to make an actual Tinker's Pickaxe, we need, I believe, to make a Tinker's Station. This is made with three patterns and then four planks. Again, the uh, type of plank you use doesn't really matter, although I guess we probably want to make ours using Dark Oak just so it matches our part builder. And so if we do something like this and like this, that gets us a Tinker Station, which for now I'll put right about here. And in here, we should now be able to make a Tinker's Pickaxe, and we're probably going to want to do that with 
cobblestone, because that cobblestone is going to allow us to actually mine some of the ores in the mining dimension. So if we come back here, we want to get a pickaxe head made with cobblestone, not wood. We want, I think, a handle to be made with wood. Yeah, you'll see here that it says durability is 1x. If I replace that with cobblestone, it goes to 0.8x. And so that means that the uh, final durability of the pickaxe will be lower if you use a uh, cobblestone handle. So you do want your handle to be made out of wood. And then as for the binding, I don't think it really matters too much, but never mind, it totally does. We again want to use wood for our binding. Over in the Tinker Station, we can click pickaxe on the left. We can put in the head the binding and the rod, and we now have a stone pickaxe. And one of the benefits here, unlike a regular pickaxe from Minecraft, is that this won't actually break. It should just run out of durability and then should be repairable. So we do now actually have the ability to mine this prosperity ore, which is very nice. And also one thing I should probably do here is grab a couple of the torches that we just made just to brighten this cave up a little bit because it's kind of dark, but there are a ton of ores here, which is fantastic, especially a ton of prosperity shard, but we have iron, which I will definitely take. Fantastic. We have prosperity ore, which I will also take. That's going to take a ton of our durability. Of course, things like emerald, we still can't mine just yet, but coal, we definitely can go ahead and mine. And it looks like there are a few quests here. Yeah, we have one to get an iron ingot. That makes complete sense. We've then got uh, emeralds, gold, lapis, and diamonds. And of course, we can make all of those into seeds as soon as we get an infusion altar because that infusion altar is required to make these seeds if i'm not mistaken it totally is i'm not entirely certain then how we're going to get gold although i think that yes there are quests up here and if i'm not mistaken yeah we do also have some ex nihilo in the pack as well here and so i think we can potentially oh but no we can't so we do have sieves but the sieve requires diamond sticks and so the sifting is a little later on here. So I guess, you know, I guess it makes sense actually. All we need to do is get some iron, smelt that down. I assume that we're probably gonna have to head this way into trying to get a smeltery. Once we have a smeltery, we can then look at making an iron pickaxe. And once we have an iron pickaxe, we can then mine things like gold and diamond and then use those in order to make the infusion altar. Once we have gold, we can make all the seeds and then we can move on with the diamond sticks. I understand that makes complete sense. Four. The time being that I don't know if there's much more we need here. Let me harvest a bunch more cobblestone just to be safe. And you'll see there that we have now actually quote unquote broken our pickaxe. But the good news is that this is repairable over in our tinker station. I am going to grab this gravel whilst I'm here though. And thankfully there's a lot of it because if we're going to get into a tinker smeltery, we need both gravel and sand. And getting the gravel from the mining dimension here is going to be a lot faster than trying to uh, hammer down cobblestone into gravel over and over again. So if we quickly head back here to our sky platform, the next quest over here does want us to craft a stone hammer. If memory serves me right, that looks something like this. It totally does. And that stone hammer is going to allow us to turn cobblestone into gravel. It does. And then gravel into sand. It does. Nice. And then, of course, send if you want into dust. Cool. This is one of those situations where our wand actually comes in quite useful because we can go one, two, three, and then just build out a bunch of gravel very quickly like this. And then we can use our hammer and holding the ultimate key, we can break all of that into send very quickly as well. So I think one thing we might be able to do here to get water, because we need water if we're going to get clay, which is what we're going to use to get grout to get us a Tinker's Smeltery. But uh, to get the water, I think we might need a Crucible from Ex Nihilo. The Oak Crucible here is uh, six Oak Logs and then a Slam. Again, I don't think it matters at all which kind of wood you use. You're just going to get a different Crucible. So let's stick with Oak for the time being, and let's see if we can't make a Dark Oak Crucible. We totally can, just as soon as we get a dark oak slab, and boom, nice. We then did see earlier that we can craft a regular sapling, and so if we take that, we should be able to place down our crucible like this. And I think, can I just put saplings directly in there? I totally can, and so you know what? Let me quickly craft up a bunch more saplings, and let's put kind of as many as we can into here. What that should do is that should slowly but surely, but hopefully not too slowly but surely, transform into water which we can then take out while we wait for that to happen let's throw some of our iron chunks into here right now i don't think there's much else we can do in terms of making that faster 
We could look at making a blast furnace once we get a bit more iron just to start smelting some of these chunks a little quicker. But yeah, I think for the time being, this is as fast as it's going to go. Once we have three iron, of course, we can then bucket out this water. And if we can get two buckets of water, we can then get ourselves an unlimited water source, which is going to be quite useful, especially for making large amounts of clay. If I'm not mistaken, the way that we make the clay here is going to be by getting ourselves a barrel. Again, let me check here. There are different types of barrel, which I think is new, actually. The last time I played with Ex Nihilo, I don't recall being able to make like a dark oak barrel, but here we go. If we do this and this, we can get a dark oak barrel, which we can then place down. Again, for now, right about here. This, I think, is working just slowly. Yeah, as you can see here, any sapling and almost any leaf as well, uh, and also inferium seeds, interestingly, can be placed into a crucible and they each give you 250 millibuckets of fluid. So you need four seeds to get one bucket's worth. The chat does make an interesting point that this might require a heat source underneath it. So you know what? We are going to lose four samplings there. But if I move this up here and I place a torch underneath it, I'm not entirely certain if that's required, but it might be. One, two, three, four. Does that work? And the question really is, does that work any faster than before? We've got our iron, so we can make our first bucket here. Unfortunately, unlike cobblestone, you can't just put the iron in here and get an iron pickaxe head. If you want to make an iron pickaxe head, you have to first get a smeltering and pull it out over a pickaxe head cast, making it just that little bit more expensive than the cobblestone one. I don't think this is going any faster though. I don't think it requires a heat source. I guess the real way to test this would be for us to make another crucible. We're going to need two buckets of water anyway. So if we put another one down back where we put the first one down and we go one, two, three, four, we'll wait a little bit and we'll see how those progress. But hopefully we'll come back to two buckets of water that we can use for an unlimited water source. While we wait for that, I'm gonna go ahead and dump out my prosperity shards and all the rest of the junk that we're holding onto. I'm gonna get some more dark oak and I'm gonna build yet another farm, maybe right here for the new stone seeds that we have. All right, and not too long later, we have yet another farm down, this one for stone. So now we can make regular stone and cobblestone substantially more quickly in the future. Over here, this is done, and then I assume this one is not too far behind, so I think it doesn't matter if it goes on heat or not. I think either is fine. Let's take this. Oh, we don't have a full bucket of water in there? I don't know how many samplings it let me put in. I can add more samplings to this. Maybe it was three that I put in before, so it might just be one more sampling's worth of, um, of water that's needed. That is unfortunate for sure. Let me get another sampling here, uh, and then let me put that in over here as well. I guess we'll find out if this one lets us extract the water, then we'll know. I thought it let me put four in. There we go. Okay. So yeah, I think it just needed the one more little bucket there. That is fine. Let's go ahead and get an unlimited water source down here. It's not going to look the best, but just as a temporary precaution. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to do it like this. We'll put down this here. And then we'll find a new home for this very shortly. But if we do that, and if we do this, we should now have unlimited water that we can use going forward for things like this dark oak barrel. If we put water and dust in there, that gets us clay. Nice. So next time, chat, we'll come back. We'll use that clay with our sand and gravel to make grout. And once we've got the grout, we can look towards setting up a smeltery. Obviously, that smeltery is going to allow us to make iron tools. Once we have iron tools, we can go and start getting things like diamonds, lapis, gold, and emeralds. And we'll look towards getting our seeds for those made as well. Obviously, getting big areas set out as well for those. And then we can look forward to other mods like X and Halo. We'll see what the sifting has to offer. I see refined storage up there as well. And I also see a ton of other mods like compact machines. FTB power pots are going to make it so easy for us to grow a ton of essence in a fairly small space once we have just a massive amount of power. There is some Project E in the mid to late game here. We have to go through and do a bunch of other stuff like the Twilight Forest before we can get into that, but not forever away. And a mod that I've not played with in quite some time is Draconic Evolution, which I'm very much so looking forward to testing out again in the not so distant future. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and ramp up this episode of Mystical Block there. 